So uh, we're going to do quite a bit today, uh, and we're not going to cover it all. What you see here on your screen right now is a practice GED test that's exclusively focused on basic equations. Um, and so what you're going to see here is some of the basic equation type problems that you might run into that you can potentially see on the GED test. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to be doing work here on this whiteboard uh, so we're gonna do the equations and then I'm gonna do the work on the board uh, so that you can see uh, as we work through the problem so we'll be going back and forth from a bunch of windows but one of the things I wanted to do just from the jump is I wanted to take uh, a practice GED test and this is actually from the official GED testing service website and this is their practice math test and how they tell us to be prepared and one of the things that I've been spending a lot of time talking about is the fact that the uh, the the new 2014 version of the GED test is 55 percent algebra so uh, we're gonna see a lot of algebra in this test so I just want to show you uh, I just want to walk through this thing and, and just show you what you're gonna see here so question one uh, this is not uh, necessarily and you know has some algebraic principles involved in it but it's not an algebra problem it's it's a basic uh, number sense problem we go to number two and then now we are getting into algebra and some of the skill of uh, when x equals three and y equals minus six then what is the value of this expression here so that's number one so so right away off the off the top we see uh, an algebra uh, problem so I want you to keep count and then here we go again here's another problem and this is an inequality um, and here this is again now we're setting up an inequality so this is when they're not equal but it's greater than or equal to or less than or equal to uh, and so we're looking at these types of inequality equations um, um, or, or inequalities so already uh, we're uh, two, two, uh, two questions into the test, and and we can see uh, already, or actually we're three questions into the test, and we can see two algebra problems. Then we go to number four. This is more of like a percent, basic number sense kind of problem. But then here we are, right back into algebra. So here we're looking at exponents, or sorry, not exponents. We're looking at uh, square roots uh, and and radical. and then we jump into the problem here so the problem says select the correct answer from the choices below um, so we have these multiple choice question, uh, 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 options here the perimeter of this shape is 65 what is the value of x so we have this picture here and we can't really see it that well <clears throat> so we just click on it then the image will come up bigger on the screen and then we will be able to see it uh, and work with it that way okay so we have this image here uh, and so now we want to go to the whiteboard that I showed you earlier uh, and show you how we're going to uh, uh, work with this problem so I'm gonna get my pencil here uh, and I'm gonna just kinda draw that shape and excuse my drawing I'm not an artist I'm a teacher <laughs> so that side is 16 um, right here we got a line coming down there uh, and that right there is 8 and then we have 2x minus 14 and then we have x minus 4 and then we have x plus 9 okay 
So now we're going to go back to the question here. So we see, so I've basically have drawn this shape on the board so we can work with it. But every single time we work on the GED test, the most important thing that we can do is we have to identify the question. We have to say, what is the question? What are they trying to get at? And so in this case, the question here is, what is the value of X? So we're looking for X. So we're going to come back to our board here. And so the very first thing we're going to do is ID the question and put a little period there so we know that's one. So we're going to ID the question. And so the question is X. We're looking for X. And then the second thing we want to do is state your path. So with the information that we've been given, um, how do we get back um, <clears throat> to the actual um, question of what is X? Okay, so let's go back and look at this question one more time just to make sure we're all on the same page. So we know that the perimeter of this shape is 65, and so we know we're looking for X. We identified here, that here, and then now the second step is we have to state our path. So what information can we just pull from the problem? Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we know that the perimeter of this shape is 65, and so what that means is that when we're going to set up an equation over here, what we're going to do is we're going to set that equal to 65 and then because when we know that we're dealing with the perimeter of a shape we are adding the sides and this is something that they expect you to know on the GED test they're not going to give you the perimeter formula like they used to on the old uh, version of the test so what we're going to do is that we're going to say 16 plus 8 and I'm just listing the sides of this shape plus 2x minus 14 plus we all we're doing is adding the sides x plus 9 plus x minus 4 so we know that all those sides of this shape are equal to 65 why do we know that going back to the question here we know that because the perimeter of the shape is 65 and is is a word that means equal so when we're translating this information to numbers we have to know uh, what that means alright now so the second thing I want to do and we have some color options here so we have to combine the term so now that we've stated our path we've pulled out all this information now we have to find out what X equals so first I'm just gonna look at all the X numbers. so there's 2x and there's another X and there's another X and those are all gonna be added to one another because the addition precedes the X value so we're gonna say 2x plus X is 3x plus another X is 4x okay so now we're gonna come down here and put 4x now the next thing we're going to do, just to take advantage of a new color to make it very visual here, we're going to do the numbers. So we got 16 plus, precedes it, 8. So 16 plus 8 is 24. Now our next number is preceded by a minus. So we're going to subtract 14. So 16 plus 8 is 24. 24 minus 14 is 10. Okay, so that's 10. And then we have a plus here, and that's 9. So 10 plus 9 is 19. And then we have a minus here, and that's 4. So 19 minus 4 is 15. So we have, uh, go back in my black here. So now we have 4x plus 15 equals 65. Now, I have a patented method that I always talk about called the COPA method. That's C-O-P-A. Uh, C stands for combine like terms. O stands for doing the opposite. P stands for perform the operations. And A, get your answer. And this is a way that you can use to solve uh, algebraic equations. Okay, so now we have 4x plus 15 equals 65. So now we have to combine like terms. Well, what's like here is the 15 and the 65 so we have to combine them by doing O the opposite so the opposite of plus 15 is minus 15 and here's a key concept I wanna show you let me um, do that a little bit better <clears throat> minus 15 
minus 15. So let me do it a little bit better here. So because the because this is equal, let me get a different color just to kind of highlight this point. Because this is an equal sign, if I subtract 15 from this side, I also have to subtract it from that side. Why? Let me show you with a quick concept here. So if I have a triangle and and then let me go back here and I say plus and then I have uh, another triangle or actually let me do another shape a circle okay and then I have that's equal to uh, another triangle and a circle okay so that's equal all right now if I take this triangle away so let me get a color just to be dramatic here if I take that triangle away is this circle now equal to this triangle and circle no but if I take this triangle away is this circle now equal to this circle absolutely so this is the same principle down here so when I um, when I take when I take away uh, when I take away from 15 from this side I have to come over here and I also have to take it away from this side so now we're gonna get 4x because 15 minus 15 is 0 and then that's equal to 65 minus 15 so that gives us 50 okay and now again I talked about this concept of the COPA method C combine like terms O do the opposite P perform the operation A get your answer so now what I want to show you is the opposite so here we have a X value remember that's what we're looking for is the X value we have the X value uh, being multiplied by 4 because when, when, a, when a letter and a number are together we assume that's multiplication it is multiplication so we have to do the opposite so what's the opposite of multiplication well the opposite of multiplication is division so instead of the X being multiplied by 4 we're going to divide it by 4 now we still have that concept we still have that concept of what we do to this side we have to do to that side again when I showed you up here if I had a triangle and a circle is equal to a triangle in a circle and if I took this triangle away then a circle is not equal to a triangle in a circle but if I took this triangle away here then a circle is indeed equal to a circle so that's the same concept here um, so now, if I'm dividing four out of this side I have to do it from this side now four divided by four is 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 just is, is one so we just have one X or X which is what we're looking for here and actually I'm gonna move this up here so we can see it better and then 50 divided by 4 is 12.5 so when we set out we said what we were looking for was our X and now we know what X equals X equals 12.5 so now going back um, and here you can see the choices and we're going to choose that choice and we get it we we get through and so we get the correct answer then the next question pops up here